Allegri has won uh, four Coppa Italia, four uh, Scudetto, two other Super Cups. I mean, the guy has won 10 Cups in, in four years. His record is 72% win. This is a big, big game for Juventus and for Allegri uh, because if he doesn't win this game and they had Ronaldo here, they brought Ronaldo to win, to go far in the Champions League and you out, uh, I'm not sure that um, he's going to be around next year. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Serie A Audio Experience with IF TV. We've got some fun stories this week. Yesterday, boys, we were all at the Inter party of New Jersey with a certain Esteban Cambiaso. We had we got the two lookalikes. He looked like he was part of your family. So. <laughs> 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 there he is here. You, Peter, you look like the son. <laughs> you look like his cousin. <laughs> Um, the pictures over there were fun. Uh, it was a good party. Cambiaso was uh, was great. Uh, I loved that. Every, he didn't let anybody go home without a picture, without an autograph. Yeah, he had a really good time. Been an Inter player. I like him. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, you nice, were one of the nicest guy I would say so far. You were you were having a, a ball at the Inter party. Everybody, we saw a lot of people. A lot of everybody who said hi to us. It was uh, it was a fun time. Mm. But everybody was asking online, Antonio, how you were doing at an Inter party. Eh, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? Yeah. I do it because to, Peter is my friend. I have to support him and I have to make him believe that uh, in the deep inside my heart, I like Inter too, you know. You're such a good uh, guy, Antonio. I was so heartbroken when uh, when we were uh, <laughs> looking at the game and they tied uh, and Fiorentina tied the game. I was almost cried, are believe you, me. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I saw, all I saw is me, Peter, Michael, and I were all at the same table and we, we all were watching on our phones. Two minutes after the two seconds after the game ends, I see Antonio from the side pop out of his seat. He comes over. He goes, "Guys, do you know what the score of the Inter game is?" Just cheering and going around everybody. I was not cheering. Lying. I mean, you had your hands up. So no, but anyway, um, I want to say, guys, we have three Calcio shirts signed by Cambiaso himself. Mm -hmm. There's one right here. Show it. Show it. Show it. Two and three. Peter, confirm that it's real. We're going to be giving all three of these away. You have a chance to win these. The first on YouTube that you're watching right now, subscribe, rate the podcast five stars on iTunes, and set those post notifications on YouTube, and you're entered to win. But we're giving all three away. If you head on to our Instagram, linked in the bio, and Twitter, you have a second and third chance to win a shirt. Pretty okay. good deal, right, Anto? Oh, absolutely. Did you get anything signed by him? Yeah. One of the shirts. One and of the shirts a, is given away. And then a book. Uh, uh, the, he, the he's book calling book, uh, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm on the phone. Excuse me. <laughs> he's he's going to want his shirt back. How do they get the no. shirt? Do they have to buy one? No, we told them already. They have to subscribe ah, to the okay. podcast. It's going to be like a raffle. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a raffle. Everyone who sets the notification subscribes and then rates that's five a good, stars. Uh, that's a good deal. <laughs> Nobody over here at this table uh, can, can do it. You don't have to pay anything. <laughs> um, wow. and anyway, you could, set, you could get that second and third chance again. By going on Instagram or Twitter. The links are in the description. But guys, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Champions League. We're going to talk about Juventus. Um, but since we've already started with Inter, we started this show with a lot of Inter momentum. I think that it's only right that we start with uh, with the Inter match. Again, we were watching the game at the club. We were, we were at, at, at this party. Peter, we'll start off with you. 3-3. Oh, <laughs> Besides the controversy, which I think that we're going to have a lot to talk about with this VAR, what did you, how did you feel I mean, about this match? I mean, it started off terribly and it ended even worse. I mean, the, within the first minute, Fiorentina gets a goal. Just you, you're wondering what is going on. I mean, Fiorentina is a tough team, but Inter has got to be prepared and you cannot let a goal in the first minute. But then, little by little, you see how the team started to play. Fiorentina definitely, uh, in the end, you can say, okay, Fiorentina deserved the tie, the way they played, especially in the first half. They gave Inter a lot of trouble. But then how the game started going uh, into Inter's favor, uh, Inter has to, has to do better to be able to maintain a 3-1 lead sure. in the 55th, 60th minute. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, uh, we see... Without Icardi, 
certain players are playing uh, better. Now, is that a question of their professionalism or just the fact that maybe something is uh, off their shoulders? That's still to be uh, decided, I guess. And we won't really know what went on and what is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, there was uh, a little bit of controversy in Politano when he scored a great goal. Well, I, I said from the beginning, I love Politano, what he's been able to do with Inter so far. Um, has really uh, met or actually, you know, uh, overjumped uh, expectations. expectations. Mm. So he ended up doing a celebration like Icardi. And right away, Perisic, like this. Like this. Oh, boy. Did you guys see this? You didn't and, see it. And, I didn't get to see it. And Perisic, uh, once he recognized it, hit Politano, tried to, like, push him down to stop doing it. Why? So that's one of the controversies that, that's going on. Is it Politano, oh, is is it Politano making a, fun of Icardi, one, or Perisic just had enough of Icardi? Because that was that was pretty much what was being said. I think it was trying to embrace Icardi. Because in other words, if Icardi yeah. does it, he wants to do it. So, so hey, I'm I'm with See. you technically. Mm-hmm. And he didn't do it in a, a way it to. Lo- yeah. It, it 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 looked like he was trying to stop him from doing it. Exactly. It, it wasn't like I was trying to give you a hug and by accident I stopped you from doing it. Yeah. This this was going around social media. Oh, I'll tell you a lot. So, so that was mm. a little bit of friction there. But then besides that, Fiorentino's got a good team. You expect them to give the run. Uh, I mean, I think Chiesa is a fantastic player. I really hope that next year he can come to Inter. Good. <laughs> he was captaining Fiorentina, too. Yeah, yeah, listen. By he said a great player. Okay. But it. <laughs> <laughs> he feels bad for you. So he's like, you guys can yeah, take him. you can have him. Oh. We'll try to get him. You know, but in the end, I didn't get to the best part. Yeah. The best part is the penalty. The seven minutes extra time. The game doesn't end until 101, 102 minutes. And the penalty that was, I don't know what he saw, what he was looking at. Because any which way that you would have uh, seen the foul or the handball, which wasn't evident, wasn't there, you can clearly see the ball hitting off D'Ambrosio's chest. You see movement of his arm, but you you don't see the ball actually touch his arm. Even... If, and that was actually something that Spalletti was getting upset at with the Sky uh, reporters, even if that ball hit off the chest and hit off his arm, by still, rule, by rule, still. it's not a handball. I agree. I agree. I, and the fact that he made that call and bad. actually went to VAR. And checked to for look, a long time. For VAR, I think it's a perfect place to say... Varfanculo. And listen, because, uh, hey, hey, we're, selling, we're selling shirts that say Varfanculo. No, I think Varfanculo, var. Varfanculo. That's what I said. Var. Var. Varfanculo. I think this is the perfect time to buy the shirts and wear it. Well, the thing is, when we were watching this, the first thing that we said at the table after we saw the replay was we said it's going to be taken away. Yes. I mean, we all looked at each other. We said it's going to be taken. It was. It seemed very clear from the first replays that we saw that it didn't it hit his chest. And to me, then afterwards, you know, having gone back and checked because, you know, they gave this call, which was such a strange call. I couldn't believe it. I thought maybe I didn't see something. I thought maybe the angle that they showed or I was looking on a phone. They said maybe I didn't see it correctly, but I saw it on TV after. And besides that, this is the craziest part. Besides if it hits his chest or if it hits his hand before that, Chiesa commits a foul. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys realize, yes. but Chiesa fouls D'Ambrosio right before. So even if you want to argue that it hit his arm or it was voluntary or if it involved, it doesn't even matter if it hit his chest. But there was a foul right before it yet on, on the same play. Okay. So either way, either way you look at it, chest, arm, whatever, you can't negate that there was a foul right before. So it was a bad call. It was too long of a call to, to, to make. And then at the end, where there's no reversing such a decision, um, I wonder if it was that he was he thought that he saw it clearly in his in his own mind. Ooh, the, the, the referee, if he saw it very clearly live, then when he went back to the replay, he he already had himself convinced that it was one. I'm not sure exactly what the situation is, okay. but there's no way to go around this, that that was uh, a mistake. This is VAR at its worst. Because uh, if he is, if he saw it live, then he didn't have to go and see it on, on the uh, on the screen on the video. If you saw it live, it's a handball, and you think it's a handball. Why you go watch it? So, if you went and watched, uh, that means that there was a, some kind of doubt. 
uh, the people upstairs, they looked at it and they probably said, you better go look at it because we're not sure. Because if the people upstairs were sure, they would say it's a penalty. It took him four minutes uh, this uh, wow. to, to check. To me, the VAR is very simple. You go and look at it. And if you look at it from uh, five, six, they had six TVs, Okay. If you look from 60V and you're not 100 percent sure you don't that give it. it is a handball, you don't call it. How can you call it if it, not even the TV could tell you 100 percent that it I was agree. a penalty? And you got six, ten different angles, and you cannot determine that it was a penalty for sure. Then you don't call it, and you don't take four minutes. It takes 30 seconds. You Easy. see, you see, you see ten, ten different angles. It's not. You take most of it a minute, and then the game goes on. But what know. about the foul prior? You're, like, you're why is why is the wait. whole action not being seen? But the main point is is one hundred percent spot on. But the main point is what I keep, you know, you say preaching for the last year and a half. Once you have a VAR, the decision should not be left to the referee. In this particular case, I think the referee... I mean, I like the idea that they gave it a penalty to Fiorentina because we caught, we caught up two points on Inter. But it, I would be pissed if the guy would have called a penalty on AC Milan, a similar penalty. I watched it in, from 20 different angles. Yeah. There was no penalty. Yeah, I agree There's with no you. No penalty, number one. And number two, again, why is the ref going to be making that decision? You can watch it. And I'm very much against the fact that the ref should not be the one making that decision. In every other sport, the commission that is watching the game, they making the decision. The ref is going to have to say, this is what they decide. Black? Yes. White? No. It's not up to him. The ref is always biased, could be biased. But, I'm not saying that they're all biased, but there is a bias within that the person. Let the people over there on a... On a decision of a two to three or a one to two to make that decision. They said, hey, listen, this is not clear, clear enough for us. We, we don't feel comfortable calling the penalty. It should not be up to him to call the penalty. And couldn't they also cut down on that four minutes if we didn't have to waste all the time of them waiting? Then they say, oh, you're going to call me. Then I'm going to come. Then I'm going to spend two minutes. If somebody in a booth. But you're already just, in overtime, Marco. Yeah, you're already in overtime. No, so I know, but we saw multiple times this, this, this week or this year mm -hmm. that, that there's a lot of time i think that's wasted where it's still not efficient enough and um and, and one more thing but why don't you stop the clock if you're going to see the var why don't you go like this and stop the clock yeah but Katano, by stopping the clock until, until, what do you do by stopping until the clock you go that's not because now move. they're saying that they played until 101 minute 100 there's no 101 minute the game is 90 minutes that's it that's what the game is plus extra time no, the extra time is because you stopped. Yeah. So you stopped at a foul so that the, there was no playing. So they stopped. Yeah, when you change, so, when you well, they had at the end, don't so, they? Yeah, they yeah. had at the end. But why don't you stop the time? You can stop the time, and then you go there, and then you start the time again. He's saying to get rid of again. extra time, yeah, but any time you know, stop. Not, no, but not necessarily. We're adding no. a different problem. Because then, <laughs> then they, you keep saying, oh, we played 101 minutes, we played 100 minutes, we played 94 uh, minutes. That's the least of the concerns, the nine, I think. Huh? That's the least of the concerns. I think the biggest thing is VAR and how it's, it's not being but used properly. It, listen, well, that's, we're talking about the VAR, but while we're saying about the VAR, and he's going to spend four minutes there, just stop the clock. Yeah. But, I, but to, to add on, to add on, just... To not blame VAR because I I don't think it's a VAR problem necessarily, but it's the way that it's it's used by the referees. I think that certain referees that we've seen multiple times are not using it properly, or yes. there's still there's still a human aspect to it. It's not just the VAR makes a decision; it's the human behind who's checking the VAR who still has to interpret it in the correct way, which needs to be fixed. But, but yeah. we leave the decision up to the guy, only to the guy, to the ref. That's wrong. I'm saying there is a majority over there in that room. If you put five people over there, two, three, three out, out of two, yeah, three out of two, they have to just come up with a decision. Yeah. So you can blame three people. Now, this all people, all of those people that are looking at the VAR in that room, they basically count for nothing. So this guy here takes the decision upon himself and decided in front of 80,000 people that said, hey, I don't care what you think. This is what I care. I also think that it should be more transparent, too. I would <laughs> like to hear 
the referees say what the call was on certain plays. I would I, I would appreciate it, especially for the people inside the stadium. I think they should that, have a mic. It would stop, say, hey, by the way, I think it would stop a lot of fight. fights and, and, NFL and just transparency. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's oh, very transparent. transparent. Yeah. And yeah. The people say. in the stadium know what to expect. They should and what's have a mic. On. They should yeah. have a mic. They yeah. should be able to speak on a mic. I said after uh, you know uh, we review the play. And they see very obvious. Was a handball. They see what's on their mind. So no, everybody's still guessing around over there. Why did he do this? Why he didn't do that? Maybe not necessarily during the game, but after the game, there should be a referee report why certain decisions were made. Um, I, I, I don't know if I agree 100% with having uh, four or five refs. There should be one person that makes a decision in the end. Maybe like how the other sport, American sports, NFL or uh, the baseball. NBA, baseball, they have headquarters that makes a decision. So you have someone that's going to be the VAR official that's in Serie A headquarters, and every game gets reviewed by that one person. So that way it's fair for the whole team, even though referees is part of the game where there's going to, as long as the referee is consistent, that's what is most important. You're not going to find consistent. anything like this. But, right? No, I know you're not going to find anything, but that's where you really have to try to to get something out of it. Then the I agree with Gaetano. You know, you don't want to stop the clock, but when a VAR happens and you take four minutes, you should stop the clock. And all the other substitution time or extra time that, that gets added up is separate. VAR should be handled separately. I think they, as a- the, the referee, this referee took not just four minutes on the penalty. He, when Vecino scored, he was there for a couple of minutes. Every It seemed like every controversial call, he was waiting there and just, Waiting for a yeah, call. Yeah, I think Spalletti's got... I mean, I, I, I always disagree with Spalletti, but at this time here, I I think he's got a point. <clears throat> I mean, hey... Uh, he went yeah. off. He went off in his yeah, thing. Sure. But I yeah, mean, he was he was right. He said, where do you see... He said, it, there's no way to not see that it hit his chest. Mm-hmm. And and like you said, you, you're you definitely not the biggest fan of Spalletti. No, absolutely. But and, uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't hate him. But I don't like him, but I don't hate him either. But what's fair is fair. Because yeah. we don't want uh, this to happen uh, to, to us or to you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, forget about Juventus. I know. If this <laughs> happened, if this happened in Juventus' favor, oh, my God. It, so. Italy would be burning right now. They would so, be going crazy. Uh, but um, also, as, as far as the match, mm. um, like you said, I think Politano played good. I think Perisic, the question marks of, of how well... Um, I thought he played compared to when Icardi is on the field is a question mark that we've seen go around as to why he's playing so well right now and not when Icardi was there necessarily. Um, also, that, that Muriel, the free kick was a beautiful, mm-hmm. a gorgeous free kick. I know Handanovic, he blamed the wind on that one. He said that the wind made it, uh, made it, uh, helped him out. And, and Donnarumma will have saved that. And even with one finger, which was a black like this, like... Uh, <laughs> it's Donnarumma's birthday today. Oh, Turned 20 years old. Gijo, happy birthday! All the best. I know you're gonna be the, the national uh, team, Italian national team goalkeeper for the next 20 years. A lot of people are jealous around here because they're not Juventus or, or Inter uh, goalkeepers. But uh, you you are there for a long time. So, as a, a question uh, uh, for um, for the podcast, when when these players now are playing. Uh, it looks like with more intensity, with more determination, and they're playing better than it seems. I heard this from a few people, mm. that they're playing much better. Is that What does that say for those players that are playing better? They have a lack of leadership. This, let me just tell you what I really uh, think. Those people, they have a lack of leadership because they choose the, the perfect time and place for them to showcase themselves with the, you know, the intensity of the play and all the stuff and, and playing as hard as they can during the game. They show their displeasure with the Icardi and, with the, and, with the, and they, at the same time, they're trying to show the inter-management that uh, he's the problem, not them. In other words... Which is not good. Which is bad because, you know, they can, they can just uh, say, turn around and say, hey, why the last uh, five or six games you didn't put the, the very same intensity on the field? Now because uh, we put Icardi on the side and then now you you just playing that way. I would be, I would just Pete, pack I, them all up and I would just feel, shake them all out. Uh, Pete, is this, uh, are they showing uh, this a real professional? They're not. Well, that's the thing. I would say it's a lack of professionalism because your duty is to play to the best of your abilities every, every game. game. F- not for your teammates, not for yourself, for the fans and for the organization. So when something like this happens, it, it, it shows that maybe certain players are not uh, worthy enough to wear the Inter colors. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, 
is it also because you have to have different questions. We don't want to uh, guess at what's going on. Is it also maybe the lack of friction or the lack of uh, tension? Maybe the locker room that frees you a little bit. No. Maybe they feel like so? they always have to give the ball no to excuse. Icardi. Is no that excuse. what you mean? No excuse. Not necessarily that, but you know what? When you play with somebody that you don't like, sometimes you can f- see it, and you don't even do it uh, subconscious. You know, subconsciously it happens when you something like that. But nah, let's be know. honest. I can, I can, I can, when when you go on the, on the field, it doesn't matter if you like the person. You you oh, we've yes. all had teammates that you don't necessarily like. You on the but whatever you do to to win. Winning has to be the yeah. goal. It's not, this guy's my best friend. I'm going to pass him the ball. What a, uh, I feel like this could be also be a situation. I get what Peter was saying. I get that point. But what happens if it's just like, uh, and there's a dif- difficult uh, position right now. Spalletti's not doing the best. So uh, they're trying even harder. They're in a difficult situation. Everyone's going against them. And uh, Spalletti wants now, not 100%, but 150% on everyone. Their captain's not playing their best goal scorer. So uh, more is expected from each one, and they're actually performing to their best ability. Just another point of view. I'm not saying that that's a truth. Mike, bro. I don't buy that. Yeah, me neither. I, I don't I'm buy just saying. I'm going to come up with saying. something I'm just else. Saying. I'm coming up saying? with something me else. Me too, me too. I don't think so. I'm coming up with something else. This is somehow, it's a blessing on the sky from Spalletti, because Spalletti can turn around one day. He said, hey, guys, you know, I didn't create all of this problem on the locker room. Van Danara said this. You guys stripped Icardi from the captainship. My best friend over here. <laughs> so what do you want? The guy's going to say, I'm the coach over here, but I'm not the psychologist and psychiatrist. <laughs> I'm another 20 people. I'm not getting paid enough for that, This, right? uh, uh, this Perisic and this, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the Brozovic. other guy? Brozovic. They have to get it together. If you don't like it, at the end of the season, you come and sit into my room and talk to me. and said, hey, by the way, I did not appreciate what happened during this period. And we wish to be shipped out or we wish you to consider the idea to ship Icardi out so we can, we can play in, a, in a, an environment that is a lot more conducive to play the best soccer for everybody. But, but at the same time, it's Spalletti's fault. In other words, this is like a, the green card for him to say, hey, it's not my fault. But then at the end of the day, he's the coach. He's supposed to be keeping the, lap, the locker room together. So that shows that even over there he has failed, okay? If Spalletti was somebody that really cared, he would have said to the management, I said, hey, let me handle this. I'm going to talk to Icardi. You want to strip him from the captainship? That's fine. Let's just let's slap him like that. But you're not going to be sitting this guy here on the bench just to punish. Because by doing that, by doing that, you're going to plant a lot of problem on the head of the guy. The guy's not a young guy. What's that, 24 years old, Icardi? What's 25, that? 25, 26. Oh, 26. 26. He just turned 26. The guy's got a career ahead of himself. The guy, if you really want to retain him, you're going to have to just not punish him that way. Because after this, the guy, to me, is gone. There is nothing that you're going to do to keep Icardi on Inter. Nothing. Well, it's very. The guy t- might take even less money from another team, but it's going to go. It's very telling as the situation stands right now. Inter made him have a medical, as the reports say, because he's been complaining about a knee injury, saying that he's been playing through pain. Um, they they went to check, and they said that they didn't see anything to be enough that he should stop playing. Icardi is arguing that he could be having surgery, and if he did have this surgery, which would be in the beginning of March, he would be out for the rest of the season. To me, I'm not a doctor. I don't know his situation, but it sounds a little bit too... Everything goes together a little bit too well. Mm -hmm. But I find it very interesting that here, because if we saw yesterday, you know, even at the Inter party, but also at on on, online, the conversation is different. When Icardi's name comes around, like we're talking about sticking up for Icardi over here. At the at the party, his name goes out, there's booze. Online, everybody's blaming Icardi. So no no, no, way. No, no, no. we're not sticking up for Icardi. No, but it 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 is in a sense right here. I am sticking up. We are talking I am sticking up. Sarcastically. No, no, he's not. No, he, he. We are talking about the behavior of the other of his mm-hmm. teammates. That's what the I point should say. Was. We're not. I should say that we're not putting the blame on. We haven't put the blame on Icardi right here. Why not? We haven't. Said I mean, it. everyone takes a blame, a piece, but not entirely. Listen. What are you gonna say, Pete? No, in the end, you can't really blame someone until you know what's going on. That's true. Because even you know, you it looks one way, it looks another way, but we don't know what's really going on. All we can say is highlight, like Gaetano was saying. How come certain players are playing in a different way or giving more effort now than before? Or even Icardi, how come all of a sudden he's getting 
uh, and he has an injury and no one knew anything about it. Or even the fact that Juan Danara is talking. We don't know what's going on. He's the key. The this is the key. Look, this is the key. <laughs> Guys, this is the key. Guys. <laughs> what a beautiful face. Okay. Wanda is the one controlling the tempo and the game over here. <laughs> if Wanda tells Icardi, she says, honey, you just go over there right now. Finish up oh, the Is season. this Wanda talking? Wanda, yeah. Can you put that thing yeah. if Wanda mm -hmm. is talking? Hey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Welcome to the puppet show, guys. Mauro, please listen to me. Just go over there, play your game, score as many goals as you can. Then at the end of the season, we pack up. I got a couple very good offer for you, and then we'll call it a day. And it comes in. He's there. Yeah. I wanted to play, but you see what they're doing to me? They put in Materazzi next to me. No, Materazzi. Materazzi. Oh, Ranocchia. Ranocchia. They, Ranocchia. Hang on, we they know the story. <laughs> they put in Ranocchia no, next to me. Story. And then down the street. My knee hurts. The captainship. My knee is now 100%. The Brozovic uh, gang over there, the Perisic <laughs> and Brozovic, they, uh, they don't like what you said. They want you to come down into the locker room and give them a hug. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to have you uh, come and apologizing in front of all of those losers. So here's the bottom line. I'm going to be sitting on the bench. I'm on the payroll. At the end of the year, we'll figure something out. Okay? Do you want to hear? Can we hear what, uh, what your boy Cassano and Wanda? Oh, please. I've, um, yeah, right. They were on Italian TV. As we know, Wanda goes on every Sunday. It happened during, um, the, during tiki -taka, the... Tiki Taka? Yeah, tiki Taka. Tiki -taka. It happened tiki -taka. during the party that we were at. And the amount of messages that we received, guys, asking for your reaction, Antonio, for this live on the podcast is unbelievable. All right, let's find out. It's, I wanted to hear that. I, I can't believe how many people want to see your reaction to this. I'm going to put it over there so you guys can all watch oh, it. Boy. Right? My boy Cassano. Let's see what happened. Listen, this guy here doesn't all talk. Right, hold on, this hold guy on. doesn't talk crap. We have translations, guys. This is Cassano speaking, guys. Yeah, agrees with me. Okay. What do you guys think? I was right then. I was right. Wait, guys, before we continue, I have no clue what just happened. So we're going to have a <laughs> quick summary. What's your reaction to that? Okay, my reaction was this. That's what exactly what Cassano has been telling her. And I didn't watch this stuff yet. I swear, I never heard about this thing I know, before. I know. So, Cassano, wait, Vanda. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You got to tell us your reaction before you yeah. do that. Okay, this is my reaction. My reaction to this guy here. Is just looking at the picture. I said, where the ball meets the grass, it's Icardi, the scorer of Inter. Okay? You cannot <laughs> really take away your I best player. That. We say where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. In this particular case, it's where the ball meets the grass. Okay? Uh, He's, who's the best player that Inter has right now? It's Icardi. Okay? The fact that those guys that didn't play for him is a clear sign that something went wrong. Now, they're trying to do, they're trying to do, I said, it's either us or him. So now, La Società on the top of there with this other, this other guy that you guys, you guys got from Juventus of there, this Marotta. Why are you pointing at him? This, yeah, because it's a Juventus uh, uh, sympathizer. So this Marotta, <laughs> he comes on board, they said, take him the captainship out, sit him over there, 
He's going to figure something out. He's going to feel but sorry. But you disagree with what Cassano said in here. And I didn't disagree at all. I'll, I'll, okay. For, for, Michael, all. for Michael and everyone else who didn't understand that, basically, Cassano was giving, um, um, what, what is it, like a, a consiglio. Um, to Vanta. Yeah. He was saying what you should do. He said, this is what Icardi should do, in my opinion. Advice. He, he, advice. There we go. He said that you should go inside the locker room, that Mauro should go inside the locker room, shake hands. Put everything, put bygones, let be bygones, right? And um, because you're at it, you're at a situation. He says, I created all the disasters in the world, so I know what the best thing to do okay. is. Just go in there, shake their hand. Vanda screamed at him and said, why should he apologize? For what? Hey, I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> so, but you can't agree with both. But wait a moment. And, and, then, and then she said, and then, Marco, he didn't say to a <laughs> Yes, he did. He yeah, said, go shake your hand. hand. Shake hands. Shake hands. Shake hands. Come on. Guys, oh, he said to apologize. More going to happen. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then Vanda screamed. She said, you don't know the situation. Why should he apologize? What should he apologize for? And Cassano said, I don't want to know who he has to apologize to, whether it be Spalletti, whether it be who else, but my advice is to go in there, shake hands, and play out the rest of the season. And he did say he was an Inter fan, right? That's Ooh. right. Yeah, he did Cassano. say he was an Inter fan. <laughs> Listen, but he's an Inter fan, but what, what did he win in his, in his he, career? He, he did he say he was an Inter fan. He said, I mean, that is. Let the record show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ludovico actually texted me the moment it happened. He said, I, I need to make sure that Antonio sees that Cassano said he's an Inter fan. Oh, okay. All right. that, that, that's... Look at that jersey there, Antonio. But listen, all right. Looks good, huh? See, what did he win with Inter? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, guys, Peter Gaetano, what do you think about uh, that little clip? What do you think about uh, Cassano and the band getting upset? Did um, did she reply after that? Yeah, she, she said, said something why else. Should, should, yeah, why should he go? Yeah, but after, after that, any, after was there anything after that? Because what she said is what sh uh, what should he apologize for? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the, else in the clip. I okay, know. so uh, I, I really I think we don't know the real story. Yeah, exactly. So I can I cannot really comment it and say you should apologize. Everybody's saying you should go there and apologize, and um, I mean I think what I know is that you do not talk about the locker room, and you do not talk about the players in the locker room. And I think Wanda did, and she made a mistake. The rest of the stuff, even on this clip, Catano, you said she she no uh, no she, on the past they, 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 in the past yeah they said that she criticized that they should have bought other players so that they can pass <clears throat> the ball to Icardi they mm -hmm. give him better assist that is wrong you you don't say that because if you say that you are disrespecting uh, Icardi's teammates then I don't know what happened after that and I don't really don't know so I cannot really comment uh, comment if he should go into the locker room and apologize but for certain uh, Spalletti or the uh, the top management should put all together and just clarify it. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, mm. I think we talked about that for a lot. By the way, Corriere del Sport, I saw today, they put out the 12 mistakes that happened uh, with VAR this season. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to go through them. I'll, I'll run through them real quick since I, I jotted them down. Number one, Fiorentina Inter yesterday. They said no penalty for Fiorentina. That was the first mistake. Second mistake, Roma Genoa. They said that Genoa was not given the penalty. I remember correctly, Florenzi, he pushed them in the late on to the match. The third one, Roma Inter. He says that D'Ambrosio fouled Zagnolo in the box and Roma were never given the penalty kick and that VAR didn't go to the replay to check this one. Milan Parma, Milan were awarded a penalty, uh, handball on Bastoni after Cutrone moved real quick. They said that should not have been given. Frosinone Cagliari, they said Frosinone was not given a penalty. Fiorentina Juve, they said that Milenkovic fouled Cancelo as the last man and should have been seen should have seen a red card. Atalanta Inter, they said Inter was given a penalty uh, on a handball that was involuntary and too close. Kievo Bologna, they said Kievo should have been given a penalty. Lazio Spal, they said that Spal was not seen as a red card after they uh, fouled the Mobile as the last man. Torino Frosinone, they said that um, Frosinone didn't get a penalty. Bologna Udinese, they said no penalty to Bologna. And then Juve Bologna said Pjanic should have seen red in that match. So 12 mistakes that they clarified as to... Um, whose side, who's gotten some of the most calls, and who's not gotten the most calls, just to clarify a little bit um, on some of those. He'll put those 12 mistakes all together. Corriere dello Sport. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's right, just again, it's another bias, uh, a way of just addressing this thing. Corriere dello Sport. It's, it's from a, Rome. Is a person? Is a person? How many there's, people on the There's Corriere a lot of journalists. Sport, I mean, okay. It's it's like the second largest sport newspaper. I think that they're okay. they're not the best, but they're they're not the worst. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I I watch the Corriere every day. I mean, now uh, because I watch Formula One, I watch everything. So. <laughs> They're a newspaper, though. They're a newspaper, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, um, let's move on. Let's move on a little bit. There's a situation that I want to talk about. It's not in Serie A related, but I feel like if we don't remember right now, and and we got some emotion going right now, Sarri, I don't know if you guys saw in uh, the final, Chelsea against Manchester City, there was a certain case that happened with their goalkeeper, Chelsea's goalkeeper, Kepa. They were about to go into penalty kicks. Sarri wanted to make a substitution. Um, it could be because Kepa went down earlier with a cramp and he wanted to sub him off because he didn't think it was good. Or it could be because Caballero, who's the second goalkeeper who we wanted to put on, knows Manchester City since he's played there and has a better he has a better percentage saving penalty kicks than Kepa does. He's, he, call, he makes a substitution. The number goes on the board. The guy Kepa, the goalkeeper of Chelsea, says, I'm not going anywhere. They sat for two and a half minutes wow. screaming. Sadi ran back on his bench. He threw his pen. He threw his notepad. Zoff came up. They were cursing. At one point, Sadi even went, went about to go inside the locker room and walk off. He pulled himself back last second and didn't go out. But Kepa refused. David Luiz went up to him. The referee went up to him. He was not going anywhere. It turns out Sadi said, okay, you know what? Stay in. They did go on to lose in penalty kicks. He saved one. He screwed up uh, on one of the penalties, but he did save one. But anyway, I think that the situation with Sadi at Chelsea is not a good one. And I think that this kind of sums up where things stand with the players. I think that there has to be a respect shown at some point. When when the scoreboard, when when the you know the the substitution board goes up and it says your number, you got to go out. Whether whether you want to go out, whether you don't want to go out, there's a lot of players who don't want to go out when their when their board is up. But you have to respect your coach. You have to respect your coach's decision. Sadi afterwards tried to calm the situation down. He said that he thought he was injured when he wasn't. I don't know the situation, but I think that a coach should stick by his decision if he wants to make a substitution. I think that it looks really bad that the player got to win in this situation and didn't come off, and, and Sadi just reversed it and let him stay on. Um, wow. And then going on to lose in penalty kicks was always going to be bad. What do you guys think about this? Gaetano, what do you think? Well, very, very disrespectful from Kepa to uh, refuse to go out. If the coach calls you out, you go out. If you have something to say, you go to the uh, to the side of the and you talk to the coach. And, and if you have to clarify something, I mean, he had the captain go there. He had Luis uh, going there, and they told him to get out. And he kept uh, refusing to go out. So very disrespectful to uh, the fans, uh, to the club, to the coach, to the assistant coach, to everybody. I mean, that's unacceptable. And you'll find out the real truth in the next game. You see, if this guy ever played uh, another game for Chelsea. They spent 80 million on this guy. They did? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I did something <laughs> else. Gatano, you know what? I let him go bow. This guy is better than Allison? Mm, Gaetano, no. you know what I, I read so. on this on this particular situation? I read that there is a lot of displeasure between a lot of players over there on Chelsea and uh, and uh, the Sarri. <clears> you and can see it. I can see it because you know uh, you know this guy here will not act like that if he didn't have the backing of a bunch of other players. So this there is a lot of rumors million, and talk. Sorry, seventy million. There's a lot of rumors and talk about the the fact that Sarri, uh, you know, he, he went into the press conference one day and he started to talk in Italian because he. Wait, he, I made a mistake again. It was ninety one million. My God. Dollars, 91 euros? million euros. That's a lot of money. It's like With 100 million dollars. Everything. 100 million dollars. 91 million. 91 wow. million. So then oh, Donnarumma should be worth 300 million. Market. That's more than us. <laughs> don't yeah. don't yeah. even start how much kind no, of money. What I'm <laughs> saying is that Sarri, on the first year that he went into the English Premier League, has failed. Holy shit. That's crazy. He has failed and has failed very badly. I mean, uh, you can showcase as much soccer as you want, but if you don't get the respect of the players, and a lot of the people that understand that, I guess they are uh, they are very disappointed with this guy here. So, uh, so yeah, what I will do if I were him, finish the season, pack up, and go back to Serie C. That's where you belong. Oh my God. Starting to Come bring on. somebody from Serie <laughs> C back harsh, up. That's a little harsh, Antonio. Listen to me. You are on the payroll. You do what they tell you to do. <laughs> Don't go over there and start to just bossing everybody around just because you think you're a great coach. You He's a coach. You. His job is I to coach. I'm paying you. You have to just do not exactly what I'm telling you to do, but you have to follow the guidelines of what 
what I'm telling you. Just you just told him think? not to coach around when he's a coach. Ah, uh, it's complete disrespect on uh, Kepa's part, the goalkeeper's part. Lack of communication, also. No, there's no lack of yeah. There's a lack of <laughs> communication because it looked like he was injured. He's saying that he's not injured. So you have to trust what the physio says. You have to try to understand what the hell is going on. It looks like he lost control. And that episode right there shows that he lost control by his reaction also. Because if you're a manager that's level-headed or know what the hell is going on, you don't react the way he reacted. Mm -hmm. You're going to show that you're the boss. You tell him, get off. They don't answer. Right. You tell the ref. You stop him. You say, I want him off. You have to make sure Conte that you would get have him gone off. on, grabbed him okay? by the ear, oh, and absolutely. dragged him off. So absolutely. The fact Which that, is what it should have so happened. To I him. really think there was a miscommunication. He thought that he was injured and he was coming in because he had to make the sub because of injury. Okay? Beyond all that, Sadi has lost control of this team. Chelsea, uh, unfortunately, have done it in the past because they've had great uh, year ones with uh, Conte. Conte, with Mourinho, with Ancelotti. And then the second year, they just completely disrespect the coach. Not disrespect them, but they fall off. This year, nothing. everything has happened in one year. Sari hasn't been able to control the locker room. Uh, players have been upset not playing time. And it just shows that when you have s certain caliber of players, and that's why I say Mourinho is a great coach, because he knows how to deal with certain level players, even though it doesn't always work. His way of controlling the team uh, has proven that it can work. And Sadi has never had the experience to coach so many talents and so many players that have already won and been with the best. Okay? I agree and that, with that. And that influences a lot. You know, even with Napoli, he's, yes, he's coached great players, but none of them have been on a, a great team, if you think about it. And so they don't know what else to expect. So they bought into it. They bought into a system. If you don't buy into the system, it's all gone. But I think what Peter what Peter just said is the key to this. You know, Guardi play coaches like Guardiola, like Saudi, like Klopp, they don't go in there and get you immediate success. When you sign a coach like this, you're you gotta build into the philosophy. You gotta buy into that. So if the whole club is not backing into it, where first year we might not win, we're not gonna we're not gonna do good because it takes time to build under a philosophy where everyone needs to know exactly what they need to do. That's Saudi's way. And I think that this is twofold. I think that the club, Chelsea, are to blame because we've seen when they've had Mourinho, when they've had Conte, when they've had Saudi, they don't know how to treat a coach. Conte wins you your first year. The second year, he doesn't get you first place again, and you sack him. They need to stick by their coach. So if you sign Saudi, it's not that in six months, if we're not in first place, we're going to kick you out. It's this is a, a two, three, four year project. If you look at the first 40 games of Guardiola versus the first 40 games of Saudi, Saudi has a better record than when Guardiola went to Manchester City. Then Guardiola at Manchester City, he needed to spend 90 million on a goalkeeper because he could play with his feet. He needed three, uh, he needed Mares on the left. He needed Sterling in the middle. He needed this, he needed that. He spent so much money and built a whole team around his philosophy. So if you sign Sari, you need to build into that. And if the players don't go, then you got to sell them in the summer yeah. and you got to get guys that build into it. But I think you, you're being too good to Sari. To uh, put no, him, like I to said, To put it's him twofold. in that level. No, but I'm saying you put him with Klopp and What has Klopp won? What has Klopp, Klopp ever won? Klopp has won. With what Borussia, has he won? Borussia Dortmund okay. won the Bundesliga twice with Borussia Dortmund. Okay. He made the Champions League uh, finals versus... Uh, okay, Sari came in second place if we're talking about second place. Yeah, but... Champions League finals is different Champions than being League second place in the league. Listen, uh, Klopp, and how much also, money has Klopp spent with Liverpool? This Liverpool, and they still can't win. Besides the point, besides the point, I'm just saying that Guardiola has won, Klopp has won, Sadi has yet to. I'm just saying right, the philosophy. That, the, the philosophy. Point, uh, the, the point that Marco was no, was yeah. making is that uh, you you have to buy and you have to give the coach a chance. Klopp has been with Liverpool for what two three years. And he hasn't won years. anything. Oh, sure. Four years. He hasn't won anything, but they, they keep him there. Because he's building now, this year they're playing good. I don't know if they're going to win, but at least they're playing good. If you buy a coach, you got to give him oh, at least true. a couple of years. You cannot you cannot expect in six months to... to, to but but, is, it, but is it the players? They gave or, him the two years contract, three years contract, right? They yeah. Gave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but the thing is, it's the players in this situation. It's not the management that's saying, oh, you're going to be fine. It's the players that are not reacting. So... You're I'm, right. No, I, I you're, read right. Differently. you're right. Michael, you're right. That's how it is. I do read it differently. Of course. No, no, I want to know what you agree no, with me, no, yes or not. No, but it's uh, the, the whole thing is about the club. Okay. The top, the people on top, 
if they know that, you know, after six months they're going to sack the coach or after a year they're going to sack the coach, it's all totally different. Mm-hmm. If the top management backs up the coach and say, hey, this is our coach, he's going to stay here, you know, the players react differently. Sure, sure. That's true. That's I'll true. tell you what I read into this stuff. Right, Mike, uh, you didn't say anything Mike, about it. I'm going to tell you what I think, and then I want to yeah. know what you think. Go. What happened when uh, when uh, uh, Conte was, uh, was at Chelsea the first year? He they won. won. At the same time, what happened within him and Diego Costa? There was some frictions. Of it, and right? who left? Diego Costa left. Okay? Then, for some reason, something went starting not to go 100% right, and then Conte started to take the blame. No, Conte is not the type of person that reacts like sorry. He will not go on the press conference and starting to talk in Italian and say, because those guys that do not understand. He, he, he addresses the player like people that they do not understand his philosophy. In other words, a bunch of dummies over here. And those are all people that I have won a lot in Europe. Okay? So when you're starting to come up with wording like that, then you're starting to see people like Hazard is on his way out. He wants to leave. He asks to be traded. At the end of the year, Hazard is gone. There are a few other players over there. They're already starting to be gone. When he was with Napoli at Del De- De Laurentiis, you know how many times they went to dinner together, those guys? De Laurentiis like this guy here. But uh, Sarri, for some reasons, he probably asked him for the impossible. The guy never wanted to compromise. He told he he was telling basically Laure, De Laurentiis, "Hey, I am the boss, not you, the boss." De Laurentiis said, "Hey, I have provided you with a squad of players that you asked me before the season starts. The fact that you didn't play Zielinski, the guy never played Zielinski. He played Zielinski. Nah, he was oh, he playing. Did. Come on, he played nah, not as much as he but should have. The, the, no, no, the key on. is, like we said last week, Sadi is not a good communicator, and the communication has it's been part the of problem being a great here. Coach, Mike, if you want to be a great coach, you have to be a communicator. Am I, I just, right or wrong? I Mike? just no, I agree with uh, a lot of parts that you guys were saying, but I feel like Chelsea in general, they just maybe it's their board, maybe it's some they don't they don't give chances to their coach, like you said with Conte. He won in the Premier League the first season. And then the second season, he, he was sitting on a bumpy road and he gets sacked. After they, not investing enough. And all and all the complaining, most of the complaining is they're not investing in, uh, they're not, the coach isn't getting the money like the other top coaches are. And Peter, like you said, you could say they haven't won as much. But in this day and age, in modern, uh, modern football, if you want to be a top, if you want to be a top team, you got to spend at the end of the day. So I do feel it is partly uh, Chelsea. They have uh, spent, but I feel like they've spent in such strange ways, which makes me question who's making the decisions. Are they giving their coach the belief to sign the players? Or are they just, oh, we're going to spend $75 million on Pulisic because that's what we want to do. And when they do spend, it's probably the previous coach's signing and not the one that just went there. So it's always going to be a uh, They overspend a on a lot of guys, battle. too. So I, I think a lot has to do with Chelsea and Abramovich maybe. If he's making the right decisions or if he trusts his coaches or if he's too quick to judge and doesn't give enough time for these Everyone's part to blame. I think that Sadi as a communicator is very poor and I think that he needs to work on those skills. And I think that Chelsea as a club, they just keep repeating the same problem without learning from their mistake and really hitting the core. It's like, oh, it's this player that's a problem. Oh, it's this coach. No, maybe it's the guys inside your board that are the problem. Yeah, you want to conclude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, Chelsea is a mess. They're going to be... Uh, uh, they're going to be fined because they were dealing with players under 18 yeah. and now probably next season Transfer they won't be able to, uh, to, to uh, buy anybody. So to me, when all these things happen, whose fault is not the coach's fault? The fault comes from the top. From the top. And I like Chelsea. Okay? I've always been a, a guy that likes Chelsea because they yeah, all so have there's Italian There's something players, so. wrong at the top. Anyway, let's move on. Back to Serie A. Um, Dzeko saved Roma at the death against Frosinone. Um, he scored two goals, but his second goal was a crucial one. I don't remember how many seconds. I know it was seconds, maybe 30, 30 45 seconds until the game was uh, at, the, at its conclusion. Frosinone looked like they were going to be able to pull away a 2-2, but Edin Dzeko... It was 95th back, minute, I think. He it was 95th. Scored, so it was pretty late. Um, and Dzeko, Dzeko put the ball in the back of the net. Again, another one that Roma really needed. I saw Di Francesco right after the final whistle. Oh, my God. There was such a relief on his face because the idea to lose or to, to lose points, I should say, to Frosinone. Um, all credit to Frosinone, too, at the same time um, because, you know, fighting back and, and coming back from being down to Roma is not easy. I know your boy Manolas went out, and um, that's right after they, they conceded one of the goals. Am I right? Yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, they said apparently they were getting a little nervous that he wasn't going to make the Champions League against Porto, but he's going to make it for the Derby against Lazio. And yeah, he's going to be. So he should be good. He's going to be ready for the Derby. Um, but yeah, weird one for Roma where they could have thrown it all away, but uh, Frosinone 
seems like those guys can never catch a break, even until the last second. They can't do it. Did you, you know see what? The game? To pick up what you're saying, I think no man now is going to be breathing on the neck of AC Milan and at the same time on the neck of uh, uh, Inter Milan over here. You I guys are probably happy, right? I'm starting, to see, I'm starting to see Spalletti in a, <laughs> to be a very, in a very shaky ground. And I'm telling you, I've seen Spalletti lately. I see him running like he's that 20 years old, coming out of the locker's room, doing three steps at a time. <laughs> oh, yeah, what the hell that? is wrong with this guy? Here? <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen he's, him doing. He's before. working on his fitness. Oh yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> guy's hiding a lot of anxiety, and I'm telling you, it's a ticking bomb that one of these days is gonna is gonna explode. You're gonna see the entire stadium taking off. Antonio, I hope <laughs> he goes on Sky Sport after the games. Like Antonio Chico Palmi, stop talking about me, and that's oh, yeah. how he just walks out. <laughs> I love Spanish. Listen, as a person, I think he's a great person. Okay, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong I, uh, for every podcast it doesn't sound like he's a great like person a <laughs> you don't like him as a coach I don't like him as a coach I will never take him as a coach but I think he's a great person I mean uh, don't yeah. get me wrong but going, like Pete I might not like him as a <laughs> fan but I like him as a friend okay thank you right. going back to Roma uh. Uh, the first five minutes <laughs> they let a, a stupid goal in and it looked like when Frosinone is going to be an uphill battle for Rome even though and we thought, you know, I thought when I saw that, I was like, wow, look, Roma's going to have one of those stupid games again. They're going to lose points here. And very close, they, they could have uh, they could have lost some points in Frosinone, a game that they should, you know, if you were going to bet 9 out of 10, you, you'll say Roma's going to win. Um, but I think besides Zeko putting in the, the finishing touches to score that goal, De Rossi made an incredible assist. The ball gets passed from Zaniola. De Rossi, no look, uh, you know, nice 20-yard uh, through ball to El Sharawi. El Sharawi puts the ball right into Zeko's path, and Zeko puts it in like the the real striker that he is. And surprisingly enough, I was looking at how many goals he scored. What's the number now? Is it eight goals? Nine? Seven. Seven goals? Check, Mike. I'll check. El Sharawi played well, too. Yeah, but I'm saying Zeko is another one that he's got to have more than eight goals in this point of the season. So maybe this is going to be, because uh, he got two goals this week, maybe be a way for him to start scoring. Uh, if there's any uh, ever a good time, it's next week against uh, Lazio. I think uh, that the I, fans would uh, would appreciate him not scoring then and then coming back and scoring imagine against Imagine what's going on Lazio. through the head of those Inter fans, man. Guys, Yo, you stop bringing it back to Inter. No, but Every listen, question goes back to Inter. Zeko is the goal scorer of Roma. No, Piontek is the goal but scorer of Inter. Scorer. He scored almost the same Icardi amount of goals as Icardi. Is the, Icardi is the man okay, that okay. Uh, you have to put it on the field. Wait, Don't let, tell me that. Yeah, Icard is the one that you guys have to bring in. How many goals? He has seven goals. Seven goals. Okay, let's talk about your boy. Oh, let's go to your boy. Which Milan, one? Milan 3-0 against, this one um, here against Empoli. Oh, okay. Piontek. Doesn't um, stop. Can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Uh, Castillejo played a really good match for you guys. What did you think about the game? Wonderful game. <laughs> Wonderful game. I mean, we didn't have the overdue, but uh, we could have scored four or five. There were two goals disallowed that they were very close goal. But hey, <laughs> one of them could have been, uh, uh, you know, said, hey, this is a goal. It was a, it was a controversial call that, again, the VAR. Mm-hmm. Again, a lot of question mark about this VAR. But Besides hey, that? 3 nothing. I'll take it. It was a Friday. <laughs> It was a Friday. Started your weekend off well. We started to put a little <laughs> pressure on Inter because, you know, we creep up within a point and then they have the... They, believe me, they play with the pressure to say, oh my God, look at that. They are one point besides that. <laughs> if we don't win today, it's going to be a problem. So, uh, and I saw, uh, I saw, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Kuchu, when he came out of, the, the, uh, of his locker over there that he was watching the game over there, uh, that he was very unhappy because the guy thought that the, the Inter were out of the game. Okay, okay, talking about your Milan, though. Yeah. <laughs> your boy, Piontek. Uh. The first six matches for Milan versus Shevchenko's first three match, uh, first six matches for Milan. Piontek, seven goals. Shevchenko, three goals. Piontek's averaging a goal every 55 minutes. Shevchenko averaged one every 167 minutes. This guy, Piontek, week after week, keeps showing us why he was such an important signing for AC Milan and why he can be that difference maker where in moments in last season or in the first half of the season, this could have been a game that you struggle in. Whereas now when you've got a guy who could put the ball in the back of the net on even one decent ball that he gets, it just helps everything get going. Where even look, Castillejo's playing great. Conti was back starting in the lineup for the first time in a very long time. Um, Even Paqueta, I feel like the rhythm 
is going no, well I, for AC Milan right now. And like you said, it's the fluidity that is really unbelievable. The way they, they the fluid, the fluid of the game is uh, on AC Milan right now. Everybody knows where everybody, uh, you know, they know each other exactly where they are on the field. They pass the ball. Everything is very fluid. I mean, starting from the very back, you know, the build up. Look, Donnarumma, he rarely makes a mistake as a build up. He just made one mistake by just uh, taking the ball to the left side when he was uh, trying to, uh, to jump uh, uh, another offensive player. But other than that, the fluidity is unbelievable. If they sign one or two additional uh, uh, midfielders, AC Milan, because defensively, I think we got it a little bit. We're there. We have a tremendous goalkeeper. I think Allison can just shine the shoes of Donnarumma, <laughs> to be honest with you. Donnarumma is the real goalkeeper over here, man. So uh, being, given the fact that he's like, what? He's almost seven foot, the kid. He's got the agility of somebody that... Uh, like that a cat, like, right? Yeah. So, uh, and he just turned 20 only. Oh, boy. The baby. Today, again, is his birthday, right? Yep, That's 20 right. years old. Oh, boy. So, uh, what huh. are you gonna say? which day is today? February 25th, right? Yeah. I'm going to try to remember next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pete, I got to tell you something. If I was you, if I were you... No, oh, it's Just, it's great to see. Finally, mm. Milan is stepping up their game and coming up <laughs> to our standards. Make a you know, phone Serie a, call to management. Serie A needs Inter, <laughs> Juventus, Milan, all these teams to be back to what they were. But unfortunately, Inter is not going to be part <laughs> of the champion. Oh, I think Inter is still Inter on the path. Because Inter Roma is going to overtake and Besides Milan point, is going to overtake. Besides that. I think they, they're still in the pack. So then for next year, it's going to be an interesting race. Besides that, Piontek, I told you, even though you weren't 100% on him, I it said this guy every week. is a goal scorer, okay? And he's got a hunger for the game. He wants to play for Milan. He wants to score for Milan. Of course, right now, everything is going dandy for Milan, mm -hmm. right? There's no real problems. Let's see what happens when they start losing some points because they're going to lose points. Let's see what Against happens. Against who? Against the... No matter what, they're going to lose points. Okay. They're going to lose points. They're not going to be able to maintain a perfect... 100% uh, record, okay? Antonio, tell him that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, uh, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. In all of this, a lot of Milan fans, you included, because I haven't heard you talk about him in a while, right. Cutrone, he's out of oh, all this. Boy. Don't start with <laughs> Cutrone. Listen to me. Cutrone right now has embraced his position. Cattuso has asked him to be patient. Okay, Cutrone didn't have enough room when Iguain was playing. Okay, then all of a sudden Iguain moves out, and we get this guy here. And now and look he still at the doesn't difference. Have room. One second, one second. They asked Cutrone's agent, "Are you going to remain in Milan?" And what did they say? We'll see. Okay, number um, one, Cutrone has built up his name on AC Milan. He has nothing. He has done nothing wrong right now. Right now, he said that all the fans. How much are, right has he done? Has done uh, plenty of. It's right. not it's about right or done. wrong. Piontek is going to be your goal scorer. We've seen it already that is he's Coutrone confirmed the goal to scorer. To wait Coutrone on the bench. is where right now? What is he going to play? I think you should be looking at it for Coutrone <laughs> because look at that. You don't oh, have so anybody right now. Inter. You don't have anybody right Are you, now. You're already to you sell him to Inter? No, oh, not you, to Inter. Coutrone but, uh, is going to put national team and he's everything. He's national team. And now so. you're ready to give him a <laughs> Coutrone is going to stay. I'm telling you what is going to happen. Coutrone is going to stay and they're going to find the system to use him in a 4-3-3. Okay? okay. We'll, we'll see if, if he will. But because what, what happens if Piontek gets, uh, gets injured? No, I'm not saying otherwise. I'm so just saying who's going to be your... backup, Coutrone is a great backup. So you, yeah. Okay, that, that was, I think that was the point that is he was that trying answer, to ask. Is that your answer? That was my question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. We'll so he's your backup. Is my Coutrone backup. is the right. backup. You used to be your number one, now he's your bench player. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bench player. Let's, a bench let's, player. Let's, let's talk about another striker who's in uh, great form right now, Milik. And Napoli, 4-0 win over Parma, making it look very simple, where we know Parma can be a tricky fixture, at least when they play against Juventus. Uh, they went really hard, 3-3 against Juventus. But um, <clears throat> Napoli made this one look simple. Two goals from Milik, uh, one from the free kick. He's tied with Messi. Mike, try to find that. What's the stat that we posted with Messi on free kicks? Yeah, they have you the have most it? free kicks in the top five uh, league. Wow. They're tied with three. This year, right? This yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. yeah, three three free kicks, Messi and Milik, two left-footed players. Um, and I think that Milik, he was struggling. We, we saw that he was missing chances right in front of the goal that, that he would never miss, but he was missing. So I think that this was a very important step for him. We know Ancelotti this week said that the Europa League took a lot out of Napoli, that it was, it was a, a punch to the gut. So it was very important for them to get back to winning ways, put this one behind them, and get a nice, comfortable win Let's not in forget Parma. Without Insigne too. Okay. Yeah. What does that tell you? Uh, that tell you? I don't know. I think uh, just a, co a comment on Napoli. Uh, it, 
when um, Ancelotti came in into the team, it was not an easy uh, place to coach because it was coming from uh, uh, the team last year. They, they, they were playing good soccer at one point. They were very close. So it was not an easy place to go. And I think Ancelotti, he settled down. He put his ideas into the way this team should play. And uh, I'm hoping that he does uh, uh, very well. Mm -hmm. By very well, you mean in Europa League? Yeah, yeah, in Europa League. Uh, the season is 13 points. Is, I think it's too many points. But uh, in Europa League, that, I hope I, that they win. I wanted to say that because we didn't talk about the Europa League draws, which uh, with Frankfurt and uh, Red Bull Salzburg, I think that they're both opponents that I was I was surprised to see so many people very nervous about these matches. I know that that they're both good teams, but I think that with the squads that Inter and uh, and Napoli have, they should be win winning these games. Inter is playing who? Salzburg. Yeah. Wait. No. no Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Frank Frank and oh. Napoli play Salzburg. Yeah. Uh, I think that that you need to have a confidence in Europe that that you can win these games and you have to win these games. And I think that some of the teams have taken a step back, or some of the fans at least have taken a step back, where they're very fearful in in some of these matches. Mm. And I know that the other teams, Frankfurt and Salzburg, they they play a lot for these games. And sometimes the Europa League can be a backup competition. But I think that both Inter and Napoli, especially Napoli, to get something, a win in the season or a trophy, or to keep going further would be very important. And for Serie A's sake, I hope both of them go through and they should be winning these matches. You know what I'm thinking? Is Inter going to be playing away the first game? Uh, yes. Know. Okay, Are that they? would have been a perfect place to put to put Icardi back into the squad because, you know, in San Siro might, uh, might be a little trouble with some of the fans not completely happy about He scores a few goals. He scores not? a few goals, comes back in. Icardi is again uh, at the top, top of the Possible. list. And, uh, Bond is happy. Everybody's you know, happy. I, I, that's if I were you guys, I would just, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> well, let's see if, every, if first it's like a marriage. So both people have to be, both sides have to agree. They say he but, doesn't want to go back unless the captain's arm bag is on him. So we'll see. We'll that's see. what they. But that's what he that's said. What they I think say. They, they say. He didn't that. say. It. They should go, do that. Going back to Europa League, I think Napoli definitely has a big push and a big chance because Salzburg. Yes, they're a tough team, good team, but Ancelotti has experience winning in Europe. He knows how to manage a team. He knows how to manage this Napoli. Um, they have, I think, a, a big enough cushion that Champions League is pretty much safe for the next year. So even though, yes, they want to keep the second place, I don't see a way that they could go under third place. So saying that they can put all their eggs into this basket and really strive to win something and bring silverware to Napoli, which from there, uh, I think, would push De Laurentiis to really invest Spend more money for Ancelotti and make Napoli fans happy. Because we've seen attendance records in Napoli, which is a shock, has really uh, dwindled. Yeah, I mean, you're down. looking at 14,000 uh, fans that go to a game where every year you would have at least 30 to, to 45,000 every game. So hopefully they, they need some enthusiasm. They need something to, to win. Some motivation. And some motivation. Yeah, okay. Rather, Inter, uh, Europa League is a tough league because you play on a Thursday and then you have a Saturday-Sunday game uh, with... Milan, Roma, all pressuring them. I I feel Spalletti might not take feel the serious. urge, not necessarily take it seriously, but take the urge to put all his best players in for Thursday, and then Sunday mm -hmm. you leave your B team. <clears throat> so, yeah, because Champions League is worth more. You're looking at forty million. Mm. Let's talk about uh, the final game that we'll talk about: Bologna, Juventus, Juventus uh, scrape a one-zero win against Bologna. Another early match, um, very disappointing, poor. Boring, um, boring, uneventful, n unenthusiastic performance from Juventus. If I could think of any more words to say about the performance. Um, so disappointing in a squad that has so much potential to do great things. Um, and then having said that, they win this match and they become the first Serie A team to earn as many points um, I, un after this, this game ever, you know? They've earned more points than any other Serie A team ever at this point. Um, but Paolo Dybala doesn't start. He goes in in the 75th minute. They needed creativity. He provided the creativity. Ball fell right to him. Put the ball in the back of the net. Juventus won. Uh, Perin, I think, was the only player besides Dybala that I would say played well. I didn't recognize him. When I when I opened my eyes and I was watching the game, I, don't know, I was still a little bit tired. I didn't have an espresso or anything yet. I didn't. I didn't recognize the goalkeeper. I don't know if you guys saw, but his haircut. Got a different haircut. His haircut. I said, "Who the hell is playing in goal for yeah. for Juventus?" It looked crazy. 
Um, but but anyway, I think that he saved Juventus in the 90th minute. Bologna hit the post after he fingertipped it wide, and he made a few double saves. Perin was was incredible. Uh, he saved the match, and Bologna Bonucci was giving so much space to Santander. Even since the beginning of the match, um, the Juventus midfield poor, Ronaldo poor, Mandzukic poor, everybody from Juventus poor besides Perin and besides uh, Dybala who later came into the match. Again, um, Allegri goes under the radar, Juventus fans pissed, but the, the thing that we need to talk about, that was just a side, is, is, is the Champions League. We didn't, we didn't get to talk about this. Juventus lost 2-0 to Atletico Madrid, and um, the only thing that you could say about this match is that Juventus fans and Juventus should be happy that it was not 4 or 5-0. Yeah. Without VAR and without Lady Luck and without Chesney not cutting his fingernails, mm. I think that it would have been easily 5-0 for Atletico Madrid. And there was no shot at Juventus scoring. I think they took two shots, maybe the entire match, that, that I could that I could remember. Ronaldo's free kick was threatening. That was a threatening one. But um, other than that, there was nothing extremely, extremely disappointing in a match where Allegri, the entire po- the entire pre-match, we're going to attack. We're going to attack. we got to score at least one goal, at least two. Let's get two goals. We're going to attack. But Juventus could not get a pass mm. in the second half of the, uh, of the field. Um, the defense... Incredibly disappointing. The worst defense I've ever seen for Juventus playing <laughs> years. God bless you. The midfield, which we've seen a problem. Bentancur, Matuidi, and Pjanic. One worse than the other. Mm. The attack. Ronaldo was good. Ronaldo Ronaldo was the only player that I think trying. was good. Mandzukic didn't touch a ball that I can even remember. Um, and... And at the moment, and Dybala wasn't bad, but Dybala's playing uh, center defensive midfield at a point. But... Um, very disappointing. The the moment, the entire season we've been leading up saying Juventus is just getting by in Serie A, but they've shown those signs of not playing good. And Chiellini kept saying, February 20th, you're going to see the real Juventus. If that was a real Juventus, this is a huge disappointment. I feel like they're, they needed that, that goal, away goal. Um, going back, it's not impossible. But if Atletico score one goal at home, Juventus got to score four, and that would be case closed. Juventus have come back in the past, but I think that this situation is very different. Simeone's team, it's not an easy team to deal with. Simeone, uh, he, he has set up a defensive wall over there. It's like an impenetrable wall. It's like a concrete with steel inside. It's like reinforced concrete, okay? Let's put it on engineering. Let's put it on engineering terms, okay? So you got four tremendous defenders over there. And even on the midfield, those guys, they filter very well. Okay, so the pressure on Juventus to win is going to be very attacking from the first, the very first minute. They need to finish the first half with one nothing. Okay, at least scoring one goal. Because when you start in the second half and you starting to play, 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 you and you get to the twentieth minute and the game is still zero zero, then they're going to have to start to open open them up. They have to start to come forward. They have tremendous player Atletico Griezmann is deadly. One He's on very one. Good He's got speed. He's got control of the ball and he's got vision. So you make a mistake with Griezmann, you're gonna pay. So Atletico is the kind of a team that preys on uh, on other teams' mistake. He showed it against Real Madrid. He showed it against the greatest team. So and Diego Costa, fortunately for you guys, is not gonna be playing. Well, if he kept missing like he did last time, it would have been better <laughs> if he was there. Well, let me tell you something. This is a very good thing for Juventus. Uh, you know that you guys. But they have, have Morata on the bench. They got a great attack. Yeah, they got I Morata tell you. too. Morata has got something. I don't think he's got any beef against Juventus. But Morata has played into the system of Juventus. He knows a lot of the players over there, especially the defender Bonucci and Chiellini. Like I like to see Bonucci on the first goal. Like he was taking a stunt and like that, just watching. As embarrassing. No, not even watching. He was covering his eyes and, peeking and then waiting until he went in to, to cry on the floor. Instead of getting up. And, uh, it's embarrassing. I got to be honest with you. I would be worried. But uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, Juventus is an, an Italian team. I wish Juventus all the best. I hope they win this game here and we move forward. So on the next couple of podcasts, we're going to be talking about Juventus playing, I don't know, maybe Real Madrid or, uh, or Bayern or... Uh, uh, I don't know Manchester City, you name it. So uh, yeah, but it's about getting to the next level. Um, I, Mike, I, I want you guys to. What do you guys think about uh, Juventus's performance? And um, Atletico, respect to Atletico. They played an unbelievable match, by the way. No, oh, yeah, yeah definitely credit. I agree with a lot with you guys. What what with you guys said, uh, but yeah, Juve were completely poor. Two zero, they got off the hook. 
honestly. And uh, it could have been 3-4, 5-0, and the game definitely would have been put over. But they've done it against Real Madrid. They came back from three goals. Even though they didn't progress, they came back from 3-0 down. They scored three. They could definitely do it against Atletico. It's just what side of what Juventus we're going to see in Torino. I agree with you, but the problem is that not to belittle Real Madrid, but Atletico yeah. are a bunch of warriors. I get like, what you're saying. These guys yeah. are possessed. Simeone charges up his players. Like, eh, no, I, I get know. what you're saying. He, he doesn't have as good of players on paper, yeah. but he rattles he, he those guys sure. up. The thing, they are concentrated for 95 minutes of that match. Agnelli has his back against the wall. There's that. That's it. If he, it's do or die with him now. So I really think I think he's gonna pull through. To be honest Allegri? with you, I think Allegri's yeah. gonna do. It. It's two goals. You can get. You don't even need to score in the first half. You can get one in the 60th minute. You can no. get one in the 80th minute. It's gonna push to extra time. I'm just saying. But it's about not it's conceding if you cannot My concede. Is gone regardless. What do you guys I'm think about the match it. before we talk about the the next coach? Well, if you were uh, waiting for a reaction after the Atletico Madrid uh, with Bologna, there certainly there wasn't any. Yeah, I mean, the team uh, looked like they were flat, uh, and this was uh, you know against Bologna. <clears throat> I guess Atletico. I mean, those guys uh, <clears throat> they don't make you play, you know. And it's not only with Juventus. Uh, every team that they go against, those guys they don't make you play. I mean, they really put a lot of pressure on you. They are good technically. They got speed. Uh, it's very difficult. Can Juventus go through? Yeah, Juventus can go through. You score a goal in the first half and, and that, that's it. You end up one nothing in the first half and you're in. You, and you're in the game. Um, but it's going to be very difficult and there's a lot, uh, even though Allegri has won uh, four Coppa Italia, four uh, Scudetto, Two other Super Cups. I mean, the guy has won 10 Cups in, in four years. His record is 72% win. This is a big, big game for Juventus and for Allegri uh, because if he doesn't win this game and they had Ronaldo here, they brought Ronaldo to win, to go far in the Champions League and you out. Uh, I'm not sure that um, he's going to be around next year. I mean, I, I feel... Uh, I think, oh, a, Ale- I think, no, Ale- I, I, I Ale- think he's Ale- a great coach. I mean, I think the, 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 the guy is, is doing, you know, he's done great. But um, being a Juventus and the pressure, now there's a lot of pressure on this game. And uh, he needs to win this game. Otherwise, he might not be around. One thing about uh, Dybala, because I think Allegri has done a great great job with all the players he, he he makes everybody plays even the people that are the players that are on the bench everybody gets to play he gets he's good in the locker room except Dybala Dybala doesn't seem to have uh, the, his real position and I, I don't know there's there's some kind of um, uh, miscommunication between uh, Dybala and Allegri I mean if, to me Dybala is uh, is uh, the Juventus Messi Mm-hmm. And they are the same position. He starts on the right wing, and Messi starts on the right wing. But I was I was watching Messi against uh, Sevilla, uh, and where he scored three goals. He starts on the right wing, but then he's got the freedom to go anywhere he wants. He goes as a center forward. He goes as a right uh, left uh, wing. He goes as a right wing, and he goes behind the forwards. And whenever he goes, somebody will cover him, and somebody will run for him. And Allegri wants him to run. He wants Dybala to run. So Dybala comes back. He gets the ball in midfield. He's too far away too from much, the goal. Too much. He's got to be closer. The, the kid knows how to score goals. I mean, last year, if I'm not mistaken, in the first 14 games, yeah, like he scored goals. Yeah, like 10 goals. So he knows how to score the goals, but he, he's too far away from, from the goal. You got somebody like uh, Mandzukic. That guy can play a uh, fullback. I mean, the guy goes up and down. Why don't you let give a little bit more freedom to Dybala. And if somebody's got to come back, let Mandzukic come back. You know, let him do the uh, the, the work to, to cover for Dybala. But the, this kid, he's got the talent. Mm. He's good. But I feel like between him and Allegri, they don't understand each other. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the year. Yeah. I think going off that point, I have like three points that... Uh, it's come to my mind. Going off that point, I think Allegri sometimes is too tactics driven, right? Who started his right back for Atle- against Atletico? De, De Chilio. Chilio. 
Why? Because he's more of a defensive player. Cancelo maybe risks, risks too much, and there's no need to risk when it's the first leg. That's the exact mentality that Juventus does not need and Juventus should not have mm. with the players that they have, with the caliber of players that they have. That's one, my first point. The second point, I feel that uh, Atletico, when the, when the draw came out, was probably the hardest team that Juventus could actually get. Not because they wouldn't be able to match the level of players, but the way that Simeone has that team built, built and the way that they run, it was going to be the hardest uh, team for Juventus mm. because they have, like you said, layers upon layers upon layers of defensive ability and defensive tactics. They know how to uh, double team a player in one area and they have fast uh, uh, strikers. So on the counterattack, they're explosive. Diego Costa's not in, Morata's there. Griezmann is a fantastic player, and I think he's one of the uh, underrated player. A lot of people don't realize what Griezmann he can do. Underrated. He's underrated, oh, for the, for. One of the best. But that's what I'm saying. No, he's one of the best, but he's underrated. He's not getting the credit, he's not getting the credit that he deserves. Exactly. So, exactly. But that's what I'm trying to say. So, Atletico now is not Real Madrid. There's walls in that defense that is going to be very hard to break. But given that. Uh, Juventus does have a chance. They, they're at home. They score the first goal in the first half. Things are looking their way. The only thing is, like Antonio was saying, 0-0. Zero, zero, it's going to create a little bit of tension. Juventus is going to maybe open up a little bit, and Atletico can strike on the counterattack, and it could uh, boil over to being uh, another defeat. Third, I think that this Juventus team has been a big illusion for Juventus uh, fans, but also all Serie A fans. They're undefeated. They've, you know, they're undefeated in Serie A right now. But every single you, you were talking about every single game, it's not like they convince anyone. No. So in the end, you see Juventus up top, thirteen points. But you know, you you just remember the win. You don't remember how they played that right. game, right? But every game has been not necessarily luck, but individual talent that's been able to win them the game. You know, mm -hmm. so, it, you know, it has been tailored in a way that Juventus is able to win. Like, even this game, one nothing. This is a game that they should tie. This is a game that they haven't done anything, but it just happened that because oh. of a, a player, star player on they, the bench, is able to be in the right spot at the right time, they, they score. Through. Or Kievo game, or the uh, Parma game, even though they lost the second game, but the first Parma game. So, all these games that are going on, they're just... They just had that They're one, wait, one extra step. By that one extra step and one extra step. And now but now, it works exactly. in Serie A. In Serie A, it works, but Champions League, it's a whole there's, different there's, level. To make two points, like you want to do three points, I got two points, the two points. Number one, the midfield since the beginning of the season, I've said is not good enough. You do not go from a midfield that used to dominate with Pirlo, Marquisio, Pogba, mm. and Vidal. Mm. Best midfield in the world right yeah. there. You go from that to Bentancur, Pjanic and Matuidi, Chan and Kedira. Mm -hmm. It is a problem that even us at this table can can understand. I was fearful of, and I said, listen, you want to prove me wrong? Perfect. They have not proved me wrong. It feels like every time as a Juventus fan, when, when we went into the game against Barcelona in the final, we knew that we were not the better team. We didn't have the players up top to be able to win us a Champions League, right? The defense was amazing. Goalkeeper, amazing. Midfield, amazing. But up top, we did lack, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing in in uh, against Real Madrid in the final. They were just much better. This year, it, it's like we build up. Now we have the attack that can win you a Champions League. You got Ronaldo, Mandzukic, Dybala, Douglas Costa, Cuadrado, Bernadeschi. You have the attack that can win you a Champions League. But now in the midfield, you take away. It's unbelievable to me the way that we went about this season, scraping by. Maybe the illusion went past them a little bit. And number two, it feels that I love Allegri. I think that Allegri is a very intelligent man. I love the way that he conducts himself. I love the way that he always puts the blame on himself whenever, uh, whenever something goes wrong. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for handling a team. But having said that, this Juventus have plateaued. It's come to a point where Juventus are not you cannot play good and you win, but there's going to be a point where you have such amazing players. 
It's not just, it can't be a cop out that you can't play good. How can you not play good with all the players at your disposal? Top of the line. It it's it it's unbelievable to me that sometimes the excuse goes to, yeah, but we don't need to play good. But you got unbelievable players. You need to win and play good. And, and, and I'm okay with, with playing bad and getting the win. But at a certain point with this Juventus, you go into Europe, and I feel like there's a different mentality that needs to be brought to the table. And that's not brought right now with Allegri. I hope he proves me wrong against Atletico Madrid. And just to answer the prediction part of this, I think that there's a long way to go. I think that Juventus, yes, I believe they can get this back, but I believe it's going to be very hard to not concede with the current way that Juventus is playing. They're going to need to do something very special. If Chiellini says we're going to see the real Juventus on February 20th, no, you're going to need to see the real Juventus I, at the Juventus I Stadium against Atletico. I disagree with you. I disagree only on one point. The fact that you've been putting a lot of blame on the midfield. My blame, and I know probably Gatano is going to agree with me, blame that I have on that squad over there is defense. Okay? Even though you keep saying that it's the best defense, the best defense, I don't see that. I think that I think that the defense has to compensate a lot for a midfield that does nothing to help them. I don't and I think see that. If you see a lot of times, the defense is so far back. Pjanic was never a central defensive midfielder. At Roma, he was always an attacking player going up scoring goals. Now Allegri has him playing in this he's, position of making the play defense. the that, he's, he's making it play doesn't, Pirlo. It doesn't help the team. Mm. Same thing with Bentancur who's not experienced. Yes, he could be a good player, but he's a bench player. You need guys that can win at this level if you're going to compete in Serie A, Coppa Italia, and Champions League. And right now, you're only going to be competing in Serie A if you keep going the way you are. Catano, would you start Cancelo on uh, on the, the game? You have I would to. put him on the first game, the, from the to. first second. Definitely. I mean, one thing about the Chilio, this guy, 90% of his passes are predictable backwards. to Bonucci or the goalkeeper. <laughs> but can you... But, but, hello? Do you see the way Real Madrid plays? Do you see the way Barcelona fullbacks plays? Do you see how Man City fullbacks play? I'm sure you wasn't even the worst part of the, the team. I know. That's but what's sad. I know, but every pass is a back pass to Bonucci. Every pass, 90% of his passes. It's he not goes propositive, back. Marco. He's right. Your father uh, is I, right. I, I, I didn't think nice that playing cross. the show. I thought playing the show was a good move to bring more defensive just, solidarity to Juventus. I think I'm that there were saying, more problems. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, you need, as a fullback, look at the other fullbacks from the other teams. You got to, at one point, you got to go up and go all the way down and cross and bring the ball back. That's how you... I just wanted to add, uh, by adding the Shilio there, I, I saw a lot of people responding. I think this was on Instagram or something. They brought up a great point. We, they, uh, Juventus always plays Cancelo, you know, big match, big matches. Did, Arle did Allegri put in the Chilio for that defensive game? For f they, they went to Spain for that 0-0. Were they looking to the win no. or were they looking to draw? I, 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 I disagree I, with, I, with, I, with you. you. But, but Juventus has so many guys up top. When you have you go in Ronaldo, Mandzukic, Allegri. But why uh, change your tactics Dybala. then? Ronaldo, Dybala, sorry. Then when always <clears> because starts. if you're going up with Cancelo and Alexandro on the right side, <clears throat> you do need to play a little bit more defensive against Atletico in Spain. You already got these guys that can attack. You don't need to go full force you need somebody who could stay back a little bit so, uh, i thought that it was a great approach I to put like him back there it showed some kind of weakness showing that no. oh you're gonna play afraid mike i agree no, with you. I, 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 agree I, think, I think that the weaknesses were showed in other areas and i think that slowly but surely we've said this since the beginning of the season that as the season um continues to go on it feels more and more that allegri whether he does win this or whether he doesn't he's not able to come back that he won't be on the bench next season. And personally, for everyone asking, you know, there's names of Zidane, there's names of Conte, there's even Guardiola, everybody. I think that Zidane would be a good name who's able to manage great players, and he's won in Champions League, and, and I feel like Zidane could be that guy. Between Zidane and Conte, I'm a little bit stuck, but Zidane in Champions League has, Look, uh, has proven just, that he can manage Marco, players. Marco, by just listening to you talking, I just realized something. <laughs> That you are under so much pressure, and the pressure, the same pressure that you feel, is been Allegri has been feeling the same pressure. You guys got Cristiano Ronaldo right now. In other words, this guy here has, has had to the quality of the team, but has, has had the pressure at the same time. Yeah, but because who's giving you, him the ball? Bentancur is giving him the balls. Now you have the. He went pressure. from Modric and Cruz to giving him nice Let passes me to Bentancur. Easy. <laughs> now you have the pressure to win. Okay, before we didn't have a great score, and now you got to score. Right. Okay, right. now the pressure is building up, 
And believe me, when you play under pressure, there is no other excuse that this Juventus team is not going to go further into the, the semi or the final, okay? I can see losing the semi-final or the final, but you're going to have to make it over there. With Cristiano Ronaldo, there is no excuse. <coughs> you are the two or three excellent players. You know what I see missing on this squad here? The quality of Quadrato. Quadrato <laughs> is injured. He hasn't been playing. Quadrato cannot be substituted by anybody. Last um, thing, what do you guys think about the coaching situation? With the news Allegri that are is gone, gone regardless. Uh, Allegri you, is gone. You, if, if Allegri would leave, it's not the greatest time to talk about it, but just, just to put it out there. I wouldn't like to talk about this just because I didn't see the second leg. Conte or Zidane. But if he would leave, who would come in? Zidane proved that Real Madrid, that he can handle these big personalities, these mm -hmm. big players. I'd like to see him. Maybe Conte. Conte doesn't have the experience in terms of winning the Champions League that Zidane has, so I'd like to see a different coach at Juventus. So Zidane? Zidane, I'd like to see. Uh, I would say Zidane also, uh, particularly because I don't think Conte, the players that are at Juventus right now won't fit in Conte's system. Also, Zidane has won the Champions League and he has history with Juventus. So I think it's a, a big pick for uh, the fans, but also the players, because a lot of players would like to play for Zidane. But then it's going to add to the pressure. Of course. but It's going to have to add to the pressure. Now yeah, you've got but, even a great coach. Yeah, but talk about pressure. He's won three in a row okay. with Real Madrid. Three in a row, but then Zidane is going to demand, he's going to demand Allegri. He's going to say, hey, I want this, 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 and this. But if Juventus wants the Champions League, unfortunately, they have to... But how far can bit. you stick oh, your neck this, out? This Juventus needs a center back, obviously, and this Juventus needs at least two midfielders. A center back? You got Con you got the you Bonucci. A, yeah, but you need somebody better. Who who's who's who a replacement? Else? Rugani. Rugani. But but have, you need no. You need you need a good center back for when one of them gets injured because we saw what they did, and you need to start finding that replacement for Chiellini. Who every time Chiellini is not there, you see how bad Juventus mm. plays. Anyway. The midfield's a problem. Don't spend fifty million on Marcelo on the left back. Oh, we that guy's great, that we, guy's gone. We have a great left back in Alexandro. Spend the money in the midfield. Crazy. I think is the key. What, what Mike, any say? questions you got from the fans? Uh, I'm no, at and the, the coach will talk about it later. We we uh, have a good question actually. I, I think uh, you know if you're talking about the coach, well. it means uh, Juventus is not going to do good. Let's. Um, We'll talk about it. Let's hope for uh, Juventus Atletico. to win. Let's yeah. hope for Juventus to win. Okay, yeah. for Juventus to go through, not just to win. Okay, because two one is not, <laughs> not to good. go through. Um, okay, go let's on. move on to questions. Let me let's keep it quick. Okay. So we're an hour and a half. Oh, bro. Yeah. Okay, oh, bro. let's say this one quick. Thoughts? There's a lot of rumors on uh, Maurizio Sarri replacing Di Francesco at Roma. Quick thoughts, guys. Great move. Bad idea. <laughs> Great move. Bad Great move. idea. I don't want to see Di Francesco leave, but I think Sarri will be fun. Sadi and they got to take Jorginho with them. They got to take both. No, no. Listen, Sadi has shown some very, very, very bad judgment calls. First of all, he takes Iguain. All right, don't go into too thank many God, points. Thank God he takes Iguain away from AC Milan and said, <laughs> hey, keep him, please. Sadi is not the coach that is going to be do well in, he's going to do well in Rome. P. Rome is tougher than Naples. <laughs> really? Roma's fans are a lot more demanding than, uh, than Naples fans. Believe me. Okay. What do you think, Peter? Uh, I think Di Francesco is, you know, he's cemented his spot, even though it's been ups and downs. It's a great coach. Sarri, I think, like uh, Antonio was saying, Roma is a difficult uh, piazza. Mm -hmm. I mean, with Zeman, you know, the good football doesn't necessarily work. They just want to win. They want to win. Even though they don't have a real uh, history of winning. But that's how Roma is. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I like it. I, I'm I like not it a lot. sure about uh, Sarri at Roma. No. Um, there's a last question, and I don't want us to go crazy right now. All oh, right, let's just keep it tame. Oh, let's just keep it tame, Antonio. I'm looking at you. <laughs> he said, "What would your What would your thoughts be on bringing in foreign referees? Uh, foreign referees? Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> I actually looked at it. I said, oh, that's so too bad. That is a great idea. Listen, a foreign referee will have a, a lot less bias than what we have right now. I'm not saying that they bias one what we have, but look all of those uh, bad calls." Even after looking at the VAR, I'm telling you. What do you think, Pete? It's just it's something that is making me, something that is thinking? on the back of my head. That something is not 100% right with those guys. They make calls that should have been made. Unfortunately, look what happened to you guys, Pete. If it wasn't for this, uh, for the ref, you could have probably walked away with the victory. Pete, what do you think, foreign foreign referees? No, it's an interesting point, but I think Serie A referees are actually one of the better referees across Europe. So that's saying a lot. Uh, as far as the bias is concerned, I don't think we should question the professionalism. 
just the the point that they have to get this protocol of VAR right. You're going to make mistakes. All referees make mistakes. There's mistakes in every league. Mm-hmm. But when the VAR comes out, you have to have the personality and the courage to make the call. You cannot, oh, it's the 90th minute. I already made the call. The fans are going to kill me. No. You make the call how it is. So if you see something and you made a mistake, own up to the mistake, and that's it. What do you think? Do they have to learn Italian? <laughs> I don't know. No, yes. not necessarily. Maybe the players have to learn English. They can use their hands. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad thing they if Serie A players hands. learned English. Uh, listen, I would say that go a, good, a, good 30%, Mike, percent, a good 30% of the referees, especially on the big games, I would bring a foreign referee. What do you think? I mean, why not? There's so much complaining about these uh, referees, that there's bias, this Juve fan, Inter fan, Milan fan, Roma fan. Why not? Let's try it out. Bring in the Dutch referees. Ref. I'll take a Greek ref. Bring in the Greek ref. <laughs> bring in the Greek ref. Yeah. Like, well, the guy's going to see some fit that she's on the side. He's going to roll. Oh, yeah. No, I think I do agree with Peter that I think that Italian coaches have proven that i mean if you look at the finals there a lot of the time it's it's some of the italian coaches that are in them refs oh sorry referees um but i do think that they need to the protocol and maybe the courage is one thing that i've always said that courage needs to be a big part of it and i think a mix of antonio's idea with them in the in the booth four out of five whatever three out of five whatever make the decision it will be the best to go guys cambiaso giveaway you know the rules check the link in the description um for more chances to win Rate the podcast with five stars. Do we have a sale going on? There's no okay, sale. Okay, no more sales, guys. <laughs> and, uh, Every week you want to give away a don't sale. Don't forget that this is the platform where if you feel depressed, you, your team didn't win, or... Uh, if you got Mourinho or, syndrome. Mourinho syndrome, whatever it is. He's got a couple pimples over here. Just keep following us. Believe in, believe in what we're telling you because uh, we are the savior for you and we're here for you guys. <laughs> we're the we, we are here for you guys and you're there for us. So... Uh, Keep watching, keep rating, keep spreading the rumors, and keep the buying rumors. our merchandise because our merchandise is made into Philippines, Singapore, even where the president is right now. Everybody's wearing the culture shirts. Yep. So, uh, Barfanculo. Barfanculo, too. Uh, do we have the Barfanculo? <laughs> yes, we have. The okay, it's going at the bottom. Okay, it's going at the bottom. That should be the number big. one. Uh, <laughs> one shirt. Selling shirt. Uh, we're we're right all now. wearing them now. Oh, we're yeah, all wearing okay. them. Okay, the, uh, the next podcast, I'm going to wear a Barfanculo. Perfect, okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so. Hopefully, we don't have to say too much. All the best. Very good. As always, guys, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see Ciao, you next ragazzi. Week, guys. Ciao. Ciao.